Yes. Welcome to A Bit of Business on behalf of Learmedia.tv and the British and Irish Trading Alliance. Welcome to the show. My name is John Fitzgerald and I'm your host for the broadcast. A Bit of Business is focused on bringing together interesting people and interesting topics for the BITA community across Ireland, the UK, and of course, further afield. And I'm delighted to welcome you to the first edition of our show today. It promises to be an exciting 20 minutes or so. So before we move to our first guest, there's three points I wanted to mention. The first, the new BITA website is fully up and running and operational. So I would strongly recommend that you take a look. Please do go to bita.ie and explore a little bit for yourselves. While you're there, two other things to look at. One, go to the magazine section and click on the latest edition of Networks magazine. It is chock full of interesting articles which are bound to be of interest to many of you out there. In addition, while you're there, and the third point to mention, please do visit page 14 of the Christmas edition of Networks, and you will find a terrific little article about the BITA expansion plans, which are happening as we speak. So it's going to be an exciting 2021 for the organization. Now, our first guest today is no stranger to everybody across the BITA community. It is Paul Whitnell the founder of the organization. And not only is he a good cork man, a committed family man and a keen golfer, he's the reason why BITA has developed into the organization that it is currently. And we look forward to having a good conversation with him. It's coming up next, so please do stay tuned. Let's kick off with Paul Whitnell, the president and founder of the British and Irish Trading Alliance. Paul, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome, John. Good to see you. Likewise, likewise. Look, Paul, let's start with a look back at the history of BITA years ago and in a moment of, what would I call it, sheer madness or sublime inspiration, you decided to walk away from a perfectly good job and set up BITA. Can you give us an insight into your thinking back then and why you actually did it? Well, the vision, I suppose, came from the, you know, we, we had a massive crash in Ireland in uh, 2008, 9, 10, uh, as you might remember. And I, I was working in the construction industry at the time. And I, had, I was faced with uh, a decision whether I stay in, in Ireland um, or I would actually look for something, um, any opportunity abroad. Um, so the obvious place for me to, to look at uh, was the nearest place, and that was the, the Ryanair 75 pound flight into Gatwick Airport. And um, I literally landed and it was a case of, you know, do I turn right? Do I turn left? Um, I took a turn right and I ended up down in a place called Maidstone in Kent. And it was there I started. But when I started, I realized that there was a massive cultural difference between doing business in Ireland and doing business in the UK. And the big difference was um, the ability for us to be able to connect with people was far greater in Ireland. Uh, there wasn't a gatekeeper in the way um, and there wasn't a process in the way that you'd have to adhere to to be able to get some business done. So the access to the market was a lot easier um, you do need to get up in the morning, you do need to work, uh, but it was a lot easier. And um, in the UK, it was, it was all process. It was all gatekeepers. So there was, a, there, was a, there was a different way of approaching it from an Irish person's perspective. Um, I found that very unfair at the start because um, he, at the beginning, I spent six months probably just going around in circles, wasting time, wasting money, wasting resource, and being very, very, very upset at the time because I felt I was getting nowhere. So I took it upon myself to organize um, a community of people that could be the go-to platform uh, and BITA uh, was born. And the first meeting we had uh, with BITA, I brought a, a board of people to actually explain what 
I wanted what the vision of the organization was going to be. It was primarily to introduce Irish companies and opportunities and people to opportunities in a bigger market in the UK. And I was a foot soldier who was the advocate of communication and matchmaking and creating these opportunities for various people and various companies. That was the concept. Mm. So somebody asked me in that first meeting, what is BITA? And I said, mm, it's, it's people who know people that help people. And they said, write that down. And we did. And it's above my head now. So that's what the mantra was. We set out our goals, our missions, and our values. And I go back to values because I'm 53 years of age now. And I feel that, honestly, that it was our generation that was a change in values. Our parents reared us to be honest, to be real, to be hardworking, um, and, and that's what we were reared as. But unfortunately, we didn't finish up the process of communicating that down to the next generation, in my opinion. And technology came in, and suddenly the values changed. And a good example is, you know, today a child will actually walk over rubbish, like it's not there. Whereas we were taught to pick up rubbish, you know, and we were taught that it was terrible to actually throw rubbish away. They were values. And, 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 and you just look at Britain, for instance, at the moment, and I'm sure it's the same in Ireland, you know, that has changed. And we, we've become a throwaway society. So BIDA is a lot more than just an organization that is people who know people that help people. It is all about instilling those values back in to us again, because we've got a chance to actually address the situation uh, rather than ignoring it. And what BIDA is, is the conduit and communication of those good values and those good practices to do things better. That's in a business sense, in a moral sense, in a cultural sense, or even in a political sense, if we need be, you know? So that is what my intention was. And lo and behold, eight years on, nine years this year, we have a very vibrant organization that does just that. So in between, there was a thing called Brexit. And you would swear that I actually knew that this was coming down the tracks. So it was fitting that there was an organization that established themselves to be able to be the conduit of communication in that regard, taking politics and taking problems out of the equation and putting in bare solutions. But those bare solutions have all of these values I spoke about attached to them, which is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And it's mushroomed, Paul, I think, because a clear sign of that is the number of healthy, vibrant chapters that we now have across the BITA community, never mind the additional connections we have with some of our overseas partners in the United States, in Australia, across Asia, etc. So it is uh, the, the, the concept has, has grown significantly since you first started 10 or 11 years ago. But look, let's, let's come back to the past 12 months, Paul. You, you got hit hard with, with COVID-19 on a personal level uh, and thankfully made a, a full recovery. How, how did that change you as a person and how has it changed your view of BITA as a leader? I suppose the first thing was I look at it now, John, and I, and I look at the figures today. The figures have gone into the 90,000s in the UK. A staggering, staggering, staggering figure. And it's so sad. And it's, you know, imagine all those families affected uh, by the loss of, of, of their loved ones. It's just staggering. That's only in the UK and in Ireland and all over the world globally. But I suppose what it did for me was it pressed my reset button in me. You know, I was running around crazy man on a plane on a train on an automobile trying to get out the word of what it is all about and and i was enjoying doing it but i was covering so many miles doing it and i was crazy busy and it was like absolute madness that i got used to and what covid did was it showed us that there had to be a reset uh, we had to do the things differently. Hence, I'm on a screen now, as opposed to talking John in a studio. Um, and we're able to do and communicate the same thing in a different way. So that was the first thing 
that actually it actually showed me was there are different ways and means of doing things. We can still be as successful as we need to be, but some of the resources were so expensive and there was no need for them, like jumping on a plane and you know it costing X amount and me then renting a car, driving down to Limerick to do things like that. You know, it, it, it sometimes you just don't need to do these things. So there was that reset button. There was also the moral reset button. And a lot of people have um, experienced this in the last couple of months. And it is very prevalent where I'm living at the moment in the UK for neighbors not to need, know each other, not to talk to each other, just pass each other by. And it is absolutely one of my worst worst nightmares when that happens because i used to say hello to everybody cars were passing down the road and i'd be waving them as an irish man does and they thought who is that madman but that's all changed because community has become community again and that's one of the wonderful things that a reset button does it allows us to think about what is actually important and examine the values and examine and question and i suppose me in my age you do that naturally anyway you kind of reassess things and you don't go as hard and certain things change in your life that become important and values become more important because you're more aware of what's around you you've also gained a lot of experience don't forget in life so that ha naturally happens but i would like to see this happening earlier in life i would like to see the younger generation adapting those values realizing how important it is to be together and stick together and stay together and work together and share more of their experiences together, you know, and rather than becoming these busy, busy fools, you know, that that um, we generated in that generation. Yeah, it's it's been a, an interesting 12 months, I think, all around. And lots of people have hit that reset button, Paul, and for good reason. Uh, but it's also given us an opportunity to appreciate some of the technology because you and I are talking from our home studios today and you can talk to Quark uh, at 12 o'clock and uh, Isle of Man at one o'clock or Boston at three o'clock this afternoon from the, the comfort of your own home. So that technology has become the glue to sort of hold some organizations together and connect people, which is very, very encouraging and very helpful, I think. But let me... Um, let me dig into a little bit about how the ethos of BITA comes to life. And, and this, this may well be a tricky question for you, perhaps a bit like uh, trying to choose your favorite child, so to speak. But can you think of one company within the BITA community where the ethos of BITA, as you have identified and uh, articulated, really comes to life? And, and tell us, what does it look like and how does that feel? Well, I suppose, you know, there's many, many, which is great because we've got that far now that we can actually pick out. And that was a question that was posed to me many times during the process. I always go back to one favorite that I have in terms of a company in Kilkenny when it started, because the seriousness is of, of, of this was very prevalent then. There was this company in Kilkenny and they were um, a shower door manufacturer and they were employing something like 60 people at the time. And um, they were faced uh, with closure. Um, they were faced because the market had left them. They had no uh, forward orders and all the people employed in that. So you can imagine a knock-on effect to actually um, families in that area. And Limerick actually as a city went through the same thing when Dell, I go back you know, a couple of years, um, had changed their plans. And there was a reset button for a lot of people that had to diversify and create new jobs. And that's where small businesses come from. So a lot of people will gain the knowledge in a bigger organization and they realize themselves that they've got their own ability and they can create a small business from this. But this said company in Kilkenny at the time were facing closure and they came to me and Bitta and they said, is there anything you can do or help us with perhaps in the UK? And there was a brilliant company who support us largely and have done so since the very, very day we started. And that's Ballymore, Sean Mulroyle in particular. And Ballymore have been a fantastic advocate of, of a, a company that's grown 
exponentially outside of Ireland in the last 10 years. And we had a conversation in terms of the facilitating this company with giving them a pipeline of business. And basically uh, I told him about what our journey was and what the possibilities were. And he went, hold him on it. He said, if he can produce the right product at the right price, why don't we give them the order? And they proceeded to get that order. It saved that company. And there is the line of communication with the right person in the right place at the right time. And that's what Bitta is now. So Bitta has chapters in Ireland, in Cork and Dublin, and the people in Limerick, Galway, Donegal, Mayo are all involved in. And what we need to know as an organization is, what is your plan? What is your pathway? How can we help you? Then we look into the ecosystem that is our membership and we facilitate that. So if you're a small company who are growing and want to grow uh, to a certain size, you will need certain resources that you cannot probably afford at the start of that journey. But what we can do is, as an organization, we can facilitate and help you have done a, some of these resources at a very, very affordable cost. And we can promote your brand, you know? So um, there was one company, and I have to mention it, um, this week, a lovely man called Tom Murphy from Castlebar. And he introduced me to the concept. He said, I want to shave the world. And I said, you what? And he said, yeah, I want to shave the world. And he introduced me to a fantastic um, product called De Facto, which is a shaving oil. And I am actually on day three now of using the shaving oil. And um, basically uh, no foam in a small little uh, bottle that's recyclable. And um, it does 300 shaves. And it's a shaving oil that gives you such a freshness on the face. It's unbelievable. I know I'm like a Gillette ad here now, but but it is fact, this is fact. And Tom Murphy uh, asked us, could we help him get this product into the UK? And we've done it by people. I was the first, I actually got the bottle and I have it here and I use it now and I can actually tell you. But when I was reading the side of the bottle, the side of the bottle had an endorsement from Tom himself. And the endorsement was, if you are not happy with this product, we will give you your money back. And that's how confident he was. But what he needed, no matter how brilliant the product was, what he needed was a network of people to be able to spread his good word. And there's a simple example of a small company up in Mayo, and we are going to help him shave the world. I think that's a, a terrific example, Paul, and I love his mission to shave the world. It's very clever. It's a play on words, and I can't wait to try it, quite frankly. Um, well, I did send you a bottle, John, so it's on the way. Great, and hopefully I'll look just as fresh as you do. And tie that in, and folks uh, listening, Paul is currently uh, wearing his leadership stripes on his sleeve, I guess, and doing a BITA boot camp Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at eight o'clock in the morning, which you can tune into, by the way. Just go to the BITA website and you'll, you'll find a link. And he's losing weight, he's getting fit, he's staying healthy, and I think it's showing, Paul. How do you feel? Um, I, well, the first week, it was, it was horrendous. I, I actually thought that I was actually, you know, going to keel over. And um, the reason I've done this is right now, mental health is a serious situation, a situation that we needs addressing. And it's going to be one of the fallouts of COVID. So um, the mental health isn't, you know, it's a word that everybody banters around, but what is it? And it, we need to drill down into the various areas where you can receive and get help for this. But I, for one, have been a guy that was used to being out and about meeting people and I seriously miss people. I really, really do. I miss meeting new people and I miss meeting my old friends and all that kind of stuff. And I can't even play golf at the moment. And I love my, my game of golf. So that is having an effect on someone who is probably a very happy, low go lucky guy. And, you know, it, it is really, really affecting me. So I decided that, you know, I'm going to start January uh, with a bit of positivity and with something that I can structure in terms of understanding my why, creating new goals, creating momentum. So it's, it's not about losing weight. 
the actual facts are that when you do things like, you know, give up the, the, the drink for January and go on a dry January, you will lose weight. Um, so I haven't changed massive diets. But what I have is I've educated myself in terms of juicing. You know, I drink lemon and lime or lemon and, and water rather um, every morning instead of a cup of tea. I still have my cup of tea, but instead of a cup of tea. And it's all those little things together collectively become a very useful tool to get yourself right. And then you can take on the challenges of your every there day after. But it's it's almost about setting those goals, understanding your why. So it's a lot more than losing weight. And, and it was just, so what I decided to do was, you know, I will do this and then people can follow what I'm doing and benefit from that because there is no cost. It's just come online, enjoy the crack. There is a bit of banter on it. And we have the racing driver, Michael Kreese from British Touring Car, which I'm sure will be on the show um, at a later stage, um, as one of my little guinea pigs that are doing it with me. And it is so much fun. Elite athletes in action, I would say. There we go. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't call myself one of them, but anyway. You're getting there. You're getting there. Looking forward, Paul. And let's look into the crystal ball and go forward to, I don't know, January 2025. What would you like BITA to look like and feel like then? I would like the next generation to adapt the legacy of BITA. That is the most important thing. It's, it's, you know, understanding the values that we have created and the importance of creating that as a legacy. There's no point in putting a plaster over something uh, for a term. And um, what we've got to do is we've got to get to the root of issues and problems and overcome them by solving, you know? So in terms of, there is a great um, saying, we have a plastic campaign, for instance, that we are, reducing plastic and the reason we're doing that is we cannot recycle our way out of this and that's a fact so stopping use is on, the only way we can save the environment stopping use and we haven't got long now that's think of those words you know that is so prevalent we do not have long so if we don't react to certain things and do certain things we have not got long and if this COVID-19 has shown us anything, is that is what we must do. When people were asked to stay home, stay home. That was the only way of improving the situation currently. So from a bit of perspective in five years time, I would like to see the values that I am very passionate about, as you can see, being adapted by a lot more people and people understanding how they can actually play a part in Vita and become part of our community. You know, whether you're a business person, whether you're an individual, whether you're an organization, you can be part because collaboration, strength and togetherness is what this is all about. Mm -hmm. And there's no I had a, a, a meeting this morning with a guy um, on a building site and I told him about all the stuff that Beta could do. And he said to me, what's the catch? There's the problem. People do not trust. So. In five years' time, if you ask me, I want people to understand the trust, the integrity, the passion, and the belief in working together, doing this together, and we can make the world a better world. Terrific. And that campaign you were talking about, the plastic pollution campaign, just for folks watching, this is the Be Plastic Aware campaign that... Uh, Paul, you and I are part of the BITA Global Forum, and this is a rallying cry to do something about plastic pollution across the globe. And small actions that you can do every single day, recycling or at least cutting down on your use of single-use plastics can really make a difference. And it starts small and it starts with each one of us. Uh, Paul, last question for you. And we have a new president in the United States, President Joe Biden. He's a good Balaná man, I believe, and got strong roots to Ireland. Is there any chance in hell you think that we could get him on the show? Do you know what? You never say never, because if you just look at the bit of website, I had a, an amazing uh, time in terms of meeting the Queen and discussing uh, what Bitter um, is all about. And after that experience, 
I think, look, at the end of the day, we're only people. We're all people. One of the things that Joe Biden has made abundantly clear is that he is there for the people. He is there to take on the challenges of that presidency without getting political, and I don't need to. He is a breath of fresh air that America needs right now, the world needs right now, and never discount Joe Biden being on this program. Great stuff. Well, look, Paul, that's all we have time for for this episode of our show. Thanks so much again for joining us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is John Fitzgerald, and this has been a bit of business. Thank you very much. Thank you.